Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Krista Moore Show. This show is brought to you by K-Coaching and ID Growth as a new way to learn from industry experts and thought leaders. And we do do this show at 2 o'clock every Wednesday, and some of you may wonder, why does she do this in the middle of the workday? Well, it is intentional because I want you to take the time out for yourself, kick your feet up, relax, breathe, and it actually coincides very nicely to our topic today, which is too busy for wellness because so many of us don't take the time out for ourselves. I'm excited to introduce to you our guest today. Her name is Renee Manning, and she is a business owner, a professional facilitator, executive coach, yoga instructor, and also the host of her new podcast, which is The Biggest Small Things. So I'd like to welcome Renee Manning. Renee, how are you today? I'm doing well, Krista. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Yeah. Great to see you. And I was a guest on your show, um, probably what, last month or so, that was a lot of fun. And I think your podcast is awesome. So I wanted I wanted to get you exposure to our audience because they need to hear this message that you're really passionate about and sharing a lot these days. Well, I um, appreciate you, that, Krista, thank yeah, you. Why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself, who you are, give us some, some backstory. Well, you know, I like to think of myself as a reformed stress case. <laughs> I definitely am not practicing something that I myself have not lived in my life, which is incorporating wellness in every aspect of my life, from my personal choices to my business practice. And I have found through years of working with entrepreneurs and business owners and busy, motivated, really high achieving people that a common denominator they all have is that they are feeling intense pressure and intense stress. And I have made it my mission to help provide some strategies and opportunities to slow down and relax and really accomplish and live our dreams in a more healthy and holistic way. Because I believe that there's so much that we can accomplish and do it with so much more joy when we're feeling good. Yeah. And I, I know the first time that we met, I'm not sure specifically when that was, but I know it was associated with EO, which is the Entrepreneurs Organization. And your role is a forum facilitator and you train and you teach, you know, that practice. But um, so you you've had broad exposure to entrepreneurs all over the world. Yes, and when you correct. say that that one common area, um, you know, I can feel that. I mean, I, I remember from my forum alone, it was a common denominator. And we were all kind of searching for how can we start focusing on being instead of just doing, doing, doing and being busy, busy, busy. Absolutely. So and those of you in forum are already, I think, have a leg up. People in forums and masterminds, for example, because that's a built-in community. And that's actually one of my strategies for including wellness into your life is to yeah. have, have a group like you have. Because there's no, if you're gonna be stressed out, there's no need to be stressed out alone. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> that's great. So um, why don't we go ahead and, and just start with uh, maybe some of the things that you are common that you've seen amongst very stressed, busy business owners, entrepreneurs, salespeople. Definitely. You know, I think one commonality, as we both mentioned, is this feeling that there's literally just not enough time in the day. There are so many demands on us as parents and as on children as uh, our parents are aging. There are demands on us that we put on ourselves in terms of things that we feel we need to do, that we must do, or our shoulds, things we should do. So, so this whole feeling that we know we should take better care of ourselves, but just can't seem to make the time is a huge one. Another thing I see is sort of a lack of connectedness, which is, as you know, a common thing happening in a very interconnected world with social media and with you know being able to talk like this, right, over video, 
there's opportunity to connect, yet sometimes they feel really shallow. And sometimes they don't provide us that true bond that as humans, we all really need. And so I, I find this lack of connection, mm -hmm. even though we're always super connected, being another commonality. Yeah. And I would imagine that you do work with a lot of high achievers and they are, when I, we talk about busy, 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 I mean, you know, there's a big difference between being busy and being productive, but that feeling that comes along with being busy, where you have so many commitments or responsibilities that you put yourself last. And I would imagine that when you see that, there, there's an impact that that has on someone's professionalism or their professional well-being or their professional presence. Do you see anything there? That's so true. And really, especially with entrepreneurs and I, I believe salespeople are very um, affected by this also in that there's such a blurring of lines between business and professional right? It's all integrated. And so what I recognize with my clients and with these entrepreneurs is that when something's out of balance professionally, it's impacting personally. And the same with personal stress and anxiety is affecting their business lives. So that that intersection of wellness is an opportunity for benefit on both sides of our personal and professional life. It's a really, it, it's a really interesting phenomenon to observe when the opportunities arise to be more joyful and to live with less stress, all of a sudden the benefits show up in multiple areas of life, right? Yeah. And so it's all, again, interconnected, but the benefit is bigger than simply professional or simply personal. That's right. And, and that we, we know we hear a lot about, well, keep those separate and don't bring work home and, and, and don't bring your personal life into the office, but we're all one being, we're all one self. And it just would be very natural for those effects um, you know, to show up in some way. I'm recalling, you know, just stress effects being, could be physical, you know, whether I'm in, sick in my stomach or I've got a neck ache or I'm tired. What right. are some, and yeah. I, I've actually really come to realize that when I include my family in some of my stressors, right, if I'm struggling because I'm not sure about, I don't know, a, a new workshop I'm offering or something, mm -hmm internalizing that doesn't help me, but I get really valuable feedback from my husband and my children. And so including the family in, in that stress helps to lift some of the burden also. And hello, it's like a cool opportunity for new yeah. thoughts and new brainstorms. Well, and they get to understand more about you and what you're going through because, and, you know, especially children and if they're young, they're not thinking about you. It's me, me, me. They just want to know, like, what have you done for me lately? But right. I think that, that's an interesting way for them to get to know you as a professional, not just as a mother. Yeah, I love that. And I love including them when I can. And again, I say that not about myself, but I feel like it's an opportunity just to think about things a little differently as, as we start to look at where am I feeling stress? Maybe the family can be part of the solution. Mm -hmm if we invite them into the conversation. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Well, what I wanted to really share with our audience today is I want to pull from you three or four kind of how to's key takeaways that they should be able to implement fairly easy if they just make the change, right? If they want things to feel different, to be different, we all need to change ourselves. And a lot of it is habits, right? But um, I'd like I'd like to walk through some takeaways for the audience today. What would you say is number one that they could start doing differently tomorrow? 
Right. Um, thank you, Krista, because I think the one thing we can guarantee is that if we do things the same, we will get the same result. And so keeping that in mind, right? Same breeds same. The first thing I'd like to suggest is to try something new. Simple as that. Whatever that might be, trying something different, putting ourselves out there in a different way, anything different that shakes up kind of our robotic day-by-day -day motions can be so fulfilling. And so number one, try something new. And what would be some examples of that? I would say it's different for everyone, but mm -hmm. a great thing to think about is try to catch yourself saying or thinking, oh, I wish I could, mm -hmm. or, oh, I know I should or any of those sort of leading questions or thoughts and whatever comes next, that's what you should do. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so, you, you know, know? I have lots of uh, friends and family. We, we might talk about these would, would, should things such as, oh, I'm going to start walking every morning and, and set my alarm like a half hour earlier. And then you end up, you know, sleeping in, pushing the, I'll do it tomorrow. It's cold outside. You know, I mean, there's always these different excuses that arise when you're trying to start something new, when you know that that new idea is really for yourself and is for your own wellness and for your health. Um, wh why don't we do it? Like, what, why can't we, why is it so hard to start something new? Because we are so comfortable in our, in our routines and our ways and we feel safe. We might feel unhealthy or unhappy, but at least we feel safe. And so it's a big leap. It's a, it's like a monumentous amount of courage to push ourselves out there. And often we worry about feeling judged or we worry about failure. And those unknowns are enough to keep us in a, a realm of comfort and complacency, but it doesn't push us to grow very much, does it? That's kind of crazy when you think about it, because you're sitting there and you know that just this one small new habit could have a significant impact. We know that we're smart enough right? because um, we might have even have changed it at a previous time. Like a year ago, we saw the results or, um, you know, I'm, I'm now going to get eight hours of sleep. And oh, my gosh, like what a difference eight hours of sleep makes. <laughs> but um, but yet we'll still stay up till midnight, you know, watching Netflix. I just I it's torturous, you know, where we, we know what's right for us. We know what the good habits are, but um, we don't go there. I always kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of that. We all are. And I think it kind of leads into my second mm -hmm. strategy, if yeah. I may, which is to give ourselves permission to give ourselves time to try something new, time to slow down and say, you know what, I'm not being a loser if I don't have my headphones in all day and I'm not just toiling away, but that taking some deep breaths, spending some time to journal, spend some time with nature, whatever you need to do to get yourself into that mindset of creation, give yourself permission to do that and also give yourself some grace that taking care of yourself doesn't mean you're not taking care of others, right? It doesn't mean that you're somehow skirting your responsibility. So just yeah, I, I feel I feel like number two is also about giving, well, obviously the giving the self permission, but it's permission to be quiet, to be present, um, to I like to say being instead of doing instead of doing. And I like that, that too. is really a, a you're, you're giving yourself a gift in that regard, but um, you're also spending some time alone, but you know, with that 10 year old self or, <laughs> or whoever it is that you're spending the time with, um, just being present and being aware. And um, instead of rush, 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 go, 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 got to do this, got to do that. I almost feel like the best self care is listening to our hearts. And Definitely. you can't do that 
busy, 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 busy. No, we certainly can't, right? And we're we're so predisposed in our culture mm -hmm. to associate success with activity, right? That's success so true. with action. And I think we get a little stuck on that. Yeah. And like, how dare you just sit around and be <laughs> and think? Like, what and think? And lazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's so but true. I'll tell you, Krista, where I come up with some of my best and wackiest ideas is when I'm just in the morning looking at a blank piece of paper and draw some things out, you know? So, so I'm just sitting there writing, but that's where I come up with some really great stuff. It reminds me of something, uh, you know, you were talking about number one, creating new habits, and then number two, being instead of doing. Right there, they could knock out two of these by creating a habit of spending more time actually journaling or um, just personal private time. We, we, in coaching, we often are saying to create, we call it thinking time mm -hmm. where nothing, you know, no electronics, pen in hand in the corner in a chair somewhere quiet, just thinking and listening um, to yourself and to your heart, as I was describing before. And I'm just thinking, well, gosh, if everyone would schedule thinking time on their calendar, they can knock out number one and number two. Well, for sure. And they could kind of think through, transition that into number three, which is our morning routine, right? That's right. What are we doing in the morning? Are we getting up and going straight to our phones? Are we going straight to our computers to look at whatever, whatever fire has happened overnight or whatever sale is now at J. Crew? Guilty. And in <laughs> Zoom that, only. Yeah. <laughs> and so instead of doing that, I'd like to propose a tech free morning. Really thinking about your morning as your gift to yourself. And doing the thing we alerted to earlier, which is getting up a little bit earlier. And trust me, as someone who doesn't necessarily love to be up early, I know that can feel daunting. The rewards, though, of having a morning routine that involves quiet time, that involves self-reflection and some activity, some stretching, uh, if anyone's interested in yoga, doing some basic yoga stretches in the morning is a wonderful way to set your whole day up for success. And if nothing else, if you can't find that time throughout the day, you got it in once, right? And so already you can feel good about yourself going into the rest of the day, knowing that you gave yourself that gift and it becomes a habit after time yeah. and it becomes easier. So I'm listening to you and I'm feeling bad about myself. <laughs> I'm because you, that's all you. You're right. Well, because I'm thinking, I remember um, when I would take the time to do all three, right? Uh, when I had a good morning routine um, and did have quiet time for myself or what was, I was walking every day with a friend on a regular basis and how much better I felt about myself, but also just more clear about my intentions for the day. And um, those are good habits. And I guess, you know, I need to get back into that. We all do. We all have our times when we're really in our flow. And then we all have times when whatever happens, life happens, situations happen. And, you know, instead of beating ourselves up, Let's just get back into the flow and recognize that, hey, that's life. We're all human. Yeah, that's so, true. I, okay, I won't feel so bad. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'll follow up with you. I'll help with accountability. Please, I could use some accountability. Thank there you. There you go. <laughs> um, what about number four? Well, and, and we're joking, but accountability and that piece, that connection piece. So number four is finding a consistent and systematic group of other human beings who are there to support you 
Yeah. So routinely creating deeper connections with other people is a great way to optimize health and wellness in our lives. It goes back to those human needs we have to connect and it helps with accountability. It helps with having fellow visionaries in your life. And so finding this trusted group is a huge way to stick with your wellness objectives, with your business goals, I know I've seen throughout the 15 or so years that I've worked with forum groups and various mastermind groups that part of the reason they're so successful is that it is a systematic monthly routine. Mm -hmm. We're all about routines and habits, right? Those help to build our success metrics where we're connecting deeply with others about our hopes and dreams and through that, we are just prompted to take everything in our head and our heart and put it out into the universe. Yeah. You know, I was uh, involved in forums with EO for many years, I think five years. And then I started to introduce those into Office Products Women in Leadership, which is the nonprofit foundation that I co-founded. And I got you involved in that. Yeah to teach us how to be good facilitators and to properly um, manage and run these, these masterminds. But it is during those types of confidential, trusting uh, relationships that we are giving ourselves a gift back. You know, I was, um, you know, they're scheduled, right? Say it's four o'clock the third Wednesday of every month that time is blocked out for that particular activity. And when you think about how you can check off one, two, three, four, it does all of that. So it's, it's a, potentially it was a new habit for me, could be for someone else. And that connection is there. It's taking personal time and you're um, not working you're being present with other people that are like-minded. So I think um, as I'm saying that out loud and I'm remembering my experiences from that, that's definitely a recommendation for, um, for moving away from always focused on work and being busy, 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 and then turning that more to your health and your wellness, fitting that in in a, right. professional, in a professional environment as well. Absolutely. And seeking that out, right? Taking a really active, empowered approach to looking for other people who are interested in kind of moving forward in that same way too, whether yeah. or not it's through your community also. Um, that could be another opportunity to be consistently committed to another group of people. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very powerful. I teach a, a a philosophy, which I call shipbuilding. And it's actually in the book on uh, chapter 13, I think, but it, it's about intentionally and proactively working on your relationships and your partnerships that are most important to you. And sometimes we forget about that, right? Um, or we take them for granted. And this is more of an exercise or an activity just to be more consistent and more intentional and you know the old adage about hanging out with the right people as well, right? For that influence. So those connections need to be the right connections and get rid of all of those that drain your energy and don't allow your best self to show up. Um, but I, I think we've got to find time for that. You know, I don't know what I would do without my girlfriends. They're, they're my, um, my connections to break down the barriers of stress and work. And I'll just give an example. When I was in the morning habit of walking, I was talking on the phone with my girlfriend who lives in Maryland. So we, she calls me and she's like, okay, you're ready. You know, so we had a set time. I, I wasn't going to sleep in because she was counting on me and vice versa. So that accountability was there, but I loved the connection and I loved that morning routine. I felt like we were coaching each other and kind of getting inspiring and motivating each other for what we were going to tackle that day. 
And um, I miss that. And, you know, we, we, the, uh, two months it's been now that we haven't been regular on that. And I can feel the, the stress or the pressure of, um, of not having that in my life. And I'm actually just realizing that during this conversation with you. So she's going to get well, a phone call. We got to get back into that routine. You know, I, I think that's so important. And the fact that you're recognizing that inside your body, right? Mm -hmm. This is not all in our head. This stuff manifests in our whole self. That's right. And we notice the negative, but we notice the positive. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like if, if someone's like, I need an excuse to do this, well, because you'll feel better. You won't right. feel that tightness that you just described, right? Oh, how, you know, how terrible is that to feel better? Oh, I know, right? No. <laughs> I, I I'm, not, feel I'm not permitted to do that. I want to feel I'm stressed out and lousy. <laughs> That's so funny. Is there a fifth one that you, that you would um, recommend? Oh, Krista, you know, I think if there's a fifth one, it's just get started. Just do whatever is in your heart. And it does not need to be some grandiose plan. It is a simple connection to something new. And you can take that and write it on a post-it note, write it on your mirror so that you see it in the morning, talk about it to your family and your friends, and just get out there and try something new and different to shake up your routine. Yeah. You know, it's funny. To you, uh, I want to mention your podcast because I really enjoyed listening to it and I appreciate being a guest on it. But it almost coincides with what you're saying, right? About oh, small things can make a big difference. And what we're talking about really are small changes and shifts and attitude or habits that could have significant impact. Um, yes. Why don't you tell us about the podcast before we uh, have to go? Well, the podcast has really started because I felt a, a gap in the podcast market, which I love. I, I love to hear about business stories and topics. And I found that so many of them were really, really tactical. And that if I wanted to hear some good stories, I had to leave the business podcast genre entirely. So I set out to communicate with you know, whomever else is in the podcast world who loves podcasts and really create a community of business owners and professionals who also appreciate stories and give them 30 minutes twice a month where they can sit back and relax, kind of like what you say in your show, and feel a sense of camaraderie with other business professionals that they're not alone to hear a little bit from me about my journey. As I said from from being in a place where I was lacking wellness, I was lacking balance, and hear how I have implemented strategies in my life that are hopefully helpful to others and in making some small changes that small stories and small things that happen in our lives should not be underestimated because there's so much power to recognizing them and sharing them and then living them. Well, and when others are listening um, to those stories or to that podcast, it makes them feel like they're not alone. And instead of receiving advice on, like you said, tactically, do this, do that, here's how, here's the five steps, whatever, um, it's listening to other stories that are relatable mm -hmm. and that they can um, they can connect with in that way, you know, so. I, I love the whole concept of the podcast and the theme of the podcast. And you've got a great way of bringing out those stories. So as a guest, I can certainly attest to that. Where did this come from for you? Like, how did you, how did you land on this? I know that you learned the hard way because you didn't have the wellness and then you found it. But where does it come from kind of at your core? My goodness, at my core, I think it, I've got to give my parents credit. My parents always encouraged exercise, they encouraged fitness, they always had healthy food in the house, even though it was really annoying at times when I just wanted a Pop-Tart <laughs> and they had Cheerios instead. But so I credit them from the beginning and, um, you know, recognizing as I got older that 
as I became in more complicated adult situations, exercise was something that was always a healthy place for me to, to work out and to find a stress relief. And then as my career kind of continued on, recognizing that so many of my clients were on that, were on that cusp of this sort of stress at the office and it was manifesting in their in their physical bodies and they they just needed a little TLC they needed some some time and permission yeah. to slow down and relax well and, and what so I, I tried to bring that what i really heard when you were describing that um, is that there is a problem right a situation where many business owners and and um whether they're owning the business or just in a career, are so wrapped up in that, that they're not actually being their best self because they're not taking care of their self. Right. And so you recognized it because you've experienced this with your clients. And I love it that you are taking your strengths and your power, your superpower, and being able to provide that and give that to them, which is what you're doing. Well, so you're I kind appreciate of that. You're pulling it all together. It's it's kind of that idea of flow and being in our sphere of genius. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there have been times when I've been out of the sphere. <laughs> yeah. So I get it. When I wrote a blog, that was not my sphere of genius, and <laughs> I I felt it in my body, and it is just a monumental difference between now, for example, doing the podcast mm -hmm. leaves me so energized. Yeah. Even though it's more work, truly, Krista, it's more work to produce the show and there's so many more moving parts, but it's easier. Yeah, it's more fun. So, yeah, and so doing, for me, you're doing what you're meant to be doing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to um, share some contact information if anybody wants to get a hold of you directly and how they can access your podcast. So we're going to put um, a slide up and maybe you can let everyone know the best way to reach you. Yeah, thank you. Email is a great way to reach out to me, which is below. And also my website, ReneeManning.com, has all things Renee Manning. It's a Renee Manning extravaganza, including a link to the podcast website where right. you can listen to all of the episodes right on the website. And if you are a podcast fan, we are everywhere. Apple Podcast and the Android apps that are things like Pocket Cast. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you search biggest small things and there I'll be. So yeah, it's fun. All righty. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to um, spend with us. I really, really appreciate it. And um, just stay in touch. Okay, I wanna leave you with one last thing. Okay. In your honor, going How into cute. summer. I've That's got right. my hat ready. Girl. That's a good Come reminder. And you live at the beach, so you better have that hat. <laughs> we got to take care of every organ in our body, That's right? right? So I've got my hat. That's a seriously cute hat, too. Well, <laughs> thank you so hand. much, Krista. Bye. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Thank okay, you. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. I want to just um, thank everyone for joining us today and having someone like Renee join in our show and just to give us some new additional insights into what we can do to take better care of ourselves and get away from busy, busy, busy and always doing and just be present and more, um, more being. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Also wanted you to be aware that our next show is next week, but it's a private show for um, SP Richards. And if you'll need to get uh, your own link for that, but also you'll discover that we're back on target for May 1st. Our guest is Steve Rosen, and he's an executive coach and an author, a business owner, and his area of expertise is sales leadership. And he's gonna be talking to us about sales leadership and the importance of it and some do's and don'ts that, and a few little secrets. So I hope you'll join us for them. Until then, we care about you and we care about your success. Take care. <laughs>